Hello, this is uh, Max Asker here talking to Bourbon FM. Um, yeah, it started actually off as as a six-piece outfit, and um, we didn't have the the we didn't have two horn players and we didn't have keys, so we only had one horn player. Um, so it came about um, from getting this gig in the Kilkenny Arts Festival, um, and. Uh, we just wanted to have something to really offer for that gig um, and a lot of people said to me just to beef out the sound a bit why don't you add some keys and maybe double up on the horns so you get a so you get a section and um, so i just took their advice if you have this kind of really nice groove and music but that's kind of has this deep hidden layer to it as well so that's kind of it was always about just keeping it funky <laughs> really and um, but have a deeper kind of element to it really I always demo the music first, so so using kind of using logic at the moment. So I'd usually demo it myself, build up all the instruments, um, and then send it on to the band. They're all great musicians, so they, they can usually just do it no problem. <laughs> they would probably say that, I, that I'm pretty strict and what exactly I want, but I mean everyone can always has to add their own voice to it, like. It's not complete at all until they've really added their own touch to it. And they're constantly telling me like this doesn't really work the way I usually play here. So they would kind of chop and change things as, as, as they kind of feel the music a bit more. But when you hear that back um, uh, recorded, it didn't actually sound that big or that kind of produced that kind of big recorded sound. So, so because of that, I was like, okay, God, I have to really get up in this demo and take so and add all. So doing all the pre-production then. So we took those mixes, and we I added like a lot of different parts then, and then um, and then brought it back to the studio, and then we we're like, okay, that's how a, 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 a CD is meant to sound. <laughs> so, so ever since the first EP, those first set of four tunes, the demo process has become like a huge part of it, and it's kind of what I spend most of my time on. So um, this is my little baby here, and um, this is a Gibson 335. Um, I bought this about three years ago in my last year of college, um, while I was studying in New Park. Um, a friend of mine there, um, he actually bought it himself from this from this great shop called Sunnet Guitars, which is on Andrew Street, um, which a lot of guitar players in Dublin probably know about. They sell secondhand beautiful guitars for um, very affordable prices. Um, so he got it in there, um, and then uh, I was just lucky to come upon him. So I got it. I got it from him, and I've just been happy, happy out ever since. <laughs> so this is what I started off with: the Boss ME50. Um, I got this thing when I was about 12 or something, or 13. But after you kind of test out a lot of stuff, you only realise that you kind of only want maybe a few things. So. So I just I use the delay um, um, quite a bit. Um, I don't really use it in the kind of very full-on sound effectsy way. Um, I just use it to give a bit of kind of um, a bit of uh, depth to my kind of uh, to my like soloing kind of tone. So you have this is without. And if you put it on. So it's kind of there in the background, but it just adds a bit of a nice a kind of depth to it, you know. Um, then I use this thing, it's kind of a harmonizer that I use a lot of the time. Um, um. So you get this nice, uh, I can harmonize with myself, um, which is really kind of a nice effect sometimes. It's quite Roy, it's quite um, the RH factor, Roy Hargrove. Um, so I like to use that. This little lad here is uh, amazing. <laughs> Huge screamer, all guitar players uh, love this pedal. Um, I'm a big fan of kind of Carlos Santana and stuff. His guitar just seems to sing rather than like go, you know, have this ridiculous distortion. So that's kind of what this pedal does for me, I think. Anyway, it kind of allows this lovely, uh, sustainable, um, overdriven note, but it just kind of sings. Um, Not like incredibly overdriven or anything like that, but it just kind of has this, it has such great power behind it. 
Yes, I'm a huge fan of the tube screen with that. Um, that's my favorite bit of gear right there. This also is a nice little um, thing for any fun guitarist. Um, that's, uh, that's the uh, micro um, Qtron. Uh, envelope filter, um, it's an amazing little bit of gear. Just gives that quack, the kind of auto wah to it. Um, I use this thing all the time now. Um, a must for any funk, uh, funk guitar player, I think. And then just a um, really um, usable tuner um, that never lets you down on stage. <laughs> So the last bit um, of my gear is uh, this uh, Fender Blues Junior amp. Um, it is small, compact, easy to transport, but it's also ridiculously powerful. I never really, even at a um, you know a, a, a big venue, I, I wouldn't normally kind of push it past maybe three or four because it just it just is so so um, powerful. And it, it cuts through as well. It's got these lovely sparkling highs. Um, so yeah, absolutely. Another another great little bit for any any fun guitarist out there. <laughs> um, yeah, so so these these uh, these two EPs were recorded and um, they're actually recorded at the same time together. Um, it was about maybe a year and a half ago or something that they're all kind of recorded. Um, so instead of uh, releasing it as an album, we decided to split them in two and, and release them as two separate EPs. Um, so, so yeah, so they're all they're they're quite similar because it's, it's a good snapshot of kind of where we were at the time. Um, uh, but I because it has been recorded quite a long time ago, there's been a lot of uh, evolutions in, in my mind anyway about where where the band will go. So we have the launch of, of the different light EP um, this Friday in the Grand Social. Um, uh, after that, that's kind of our last big thing of 2014. Um, been working very closely with uh, with the Robs at Ensemble Music, um, so we're kind of we're planning to um, uh, yeah start work start work on the uh, on on the album then in 2015. That's kind of that's the main goal at the moment, just to really uh, lock myself away and <laughs> just be writing constantly for the next for the next foreseeable future.